and we're back for another episode. In this episode, we're going to be continuing the 4.1 story. And as always, hello from Mifri. Alright. So, we are here in the Gold Saucer at... 6-7. Uh, and we need to talk to Nanamo. So let's talk to her. The quest is called El Sultana's Resolve. Nanamo appears to be reassessing her plans. Prophet, the thought never even crossed my mind. But standing about lamenting my naivety will not do anyone any good. I shall consider my lessons learned and press on. Mifri, are you perchance acquainted with any successful merchants? If my at attempt at philanthropy is obliged to reap a profit, it would seem wise to consult someone with a knack of... Sorry, a knack for business. Ordinarily, I would not trust any agent of the East Aldenar Trading Company. But if you hold this um, Hancock fellow in high esteem, I am content to be led by you. You may repay my faith by journeying to the distant land of Kugane and speaking with him on my behalf. Eager though I am to visit those sh shores, I have not the leisure for a lengthy sea voyage. Now, assuming you will travel as venturers do, uh, sorry, I want to do, I shall await your report by the Aetherite in Aldar. A fair journey to you, Mifri, a swift one, if you please. Yeah, aka, you can teleport, so just teleport as quickly as you can and get back to me. <laughs> So where is Hancock? The Ruby Bazaar. The Ruby? The Ruby Price? What the hell? Whoops. Well, that was not my intention at all. Hashtag fail. Best episode ever. Let's go back to Kugane and go to the Ruby Bazaar. Okay, Aethernet, the Ruby Bazaar. There you go. Do, do, do. I need to talk to this guy, don't I? Okay, here is Hancock. So, Mifri, to what do I owe the pleasure? Or are you here on business? I beg your pardon. A grace of Sultana would have my opinion on how best to invest the wealth of Uldar. My dear Mifri, I have you to thank for this. Recognition, I am sure. And I am flattered you came to me, truly flattered. But why settle for a lowly apprentice when you could have the master? Upon matters of profit, there is no living soul better qualified to vice a grace than Chairman Lolorito, a man whose morning excursions are said to fill his uh, guard robe with gold. I should be happy to arrange a meeting for you, say at the Science former headquarters in Fanalan. The Waking Sands would seem a suitable neutral venue for negotiations, don't you think? Fare you well, Mifri, and may your dealings prove fa fruitful. Okay. So let's go. Let's report back. So let's see. Where is she? Where is the queen? I used to spend so much time there desimping. Do you guys remember to get field craft demi materia freeze? I wonder what they're worth now. I even check. Welcome back, Mifri. Did your merchant friend have any useful advice to share? With Lodorito, and you agreed to this? I am well aware of his standing in the field of business, but I had hoped to keep the monetarists at arm's length, and him in particular. Nay, I cannot live in fear of the man. I must learn how to treat 
with him if I am to rule Uldar effectively. Very well, I will meet with Lodorito. Let us go ahead to the Waking Sands and prepare for his coming. I mean, she's the queen. Couldn't she, like, summon him? Why does she have to go to him? Okay. So, this is where the Scions first congregated. I have heard many tales, but never had occasion to visit. To work then, the hour of the meeting draws near, and I would gather my force. Pray see to it that we have appointed the appointed room to ourselves. Okie dokie. A personal summons from the Scions. This must be important business indeed. Though, if it concerns anything so underhand as an assassination, I fear I can be of little help. <laughs> you have made your point. It is indeed unsettling to find oneself seated across from an impassive mask. There, would this better please your grace? Or should I address you as Lady Lillera? Hmm? Nay, the deception has served its purpose. I am glad to see you found amusement in my little jest, Lord Lollorito. But shall we proceed to the business at hand? By all means. I must say, I am most eager to hear your proposal. Simply put, I would aid the refugees camped in Thanalan in their efforts to return to Alamigo. The reparations you paid in the wake of your earlier misdemeanors will be used to fund the endeavor, together with the fortune seized from the late Teleji Adeleji's estate. But this plan is not intended to benefit the displaced alone. I would make of this an investment which shall enrich Uldar and Alamigo both. And who better to consult on matters of profit than the wealthiest man in all of Thanalan? I beseech you then, Lord Lollorito, share with us your mercantile wisdom. Ah, <laughs> twould seem your grace has matured beyond acts of earnest yet misplaced charity. Pray tell me more. To summarize, in return for facilitating the repatriation of refugees and assisting in the establishment of new industry in Alamigo, you ask that a proportion of all subsequent profits be promised to Uldar. Huh, I am impressed, Your Grace. Tis an elegant solution. Albeit one lacking certain crucial details, specifically which industry and where. How swiftly you identified the weakness in my plan, just as I knew you would. Your travels have taken you across the length and breadth of Gear Abania, and you know the land far better than I. Which of the settlements you visited would best provide a home for our refugees? Which has the greatest potential to flourish, given the appropriate investment? Would be Ralga's Reach, wouldn't it? Sultry, Alagiri, Alagana, the Sultry, Alagiri? Question mark. Yes, if a stable trade route can be established between Uldar and Alamigo, then 
Alagiri would once more become an important waypoint. But while such growth would greatly benefit its current residents, I'm afraid it could sustain little beyond that. <laughs> As AKA, you're wrong. The sultry? Question mark? Ah, yes, that desolate little village on the shore of Loch Seld. I know the sultry and its products well. The Imperial invasion brought an end to their more widespread distribution. Much to the dismay of many a wealthy gourmand, myself included. Salt has ever been a transformative ingredient. And in this instance, I dare say, it could transform a modicum of effort into a mountain of gill. The local citizens will need to be consulted, of course. But I trust the East Aldenar Trading Company can be relied upon to provide its assistance in negotiating a mutually beneficial arrangement. Naturally, Your Grace. I shall dispatch representatives well-versed in the extraction of this white gold and wring every last ounce of profit from its production. The Loch's bounty will contribute to Alamigo's enrichment whilst easing the burden on the bull's aching shoulders. Just as your grace desired. <laughs> Deal is struck then. Cool. Next. So I fear it will be many years before I feel comfortable taking part in such negotiations, but I shall not complain. We have piqued Lolorito's interest and secured his invaluable expertise. Thank you, Mifri. I could not have done it without you. Okay, let's complete. Next. Next quest is called Securing the Sultry. Nanamo is ready to move ahead with her plans. So our course is decided. I shall return to the palace and have my ministers begin work on implementing the particulars of my plan. If I could prevail upon you one more time, Mifri, I would ask that you convey the details of our negotiations to Commander Hext on your next return to Alamigo. My thanks to again. Together we sh have laid the groundwork for an endeavor which promises to benefit the people of Alamigo and Ulda both. Fair enough, fair enough. So let's go. Let's teleport E. Okay, let's talk to Lise. So, Mifri, you're back. What did Nanamo... Oh, sorry. Are you allowed to talk about your audience with the Sultana? So, Roban, saying he's going to return to Uldar, but she isn't sure he wants to. Uh, tell us something we don't know, but I am pleased to hear she's committed to helping our refugees come home. And this plan to revitalize the Soul Tree does make a lot of sense. Quite how you convinced her to seek Lor Lorito's help is another question. After all, that has, sorry, has happened. He is the very last person I would expect her to turn to for advice. But on a more practical note, at least assuming the interim government elects to accept Aldar's proposal, I have one caveat. I would like you to include in the bargain. Alamigo must be permitted to cover a portion of the investment. We have a fortune at our disposal after all, and allowing Aldar to provide the entirety of the capital will afford Lodorito too much control. Honestly, Alphanode, it's like Kugane never happened. What exactly does a ruthless profiteer have to do to earn your trust? And yes, you do make a good point. First things first though, we need to discuss this proposal with the Sultry's residents. Whiskar, how do you fancy explaining the Sultana's plan to your grandfather? I'd like to hear what what things of the idea before agreeing to anything. 
Right away, Commander. Would you mind coming along with me? I might need you to fill in the details. Then I shall come as well. Should what wish to discuss figures, my knowledge of the nation's finances may prove useful. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so let's speak with what? You what? What's your name? What? It's what? Or who? Or what? It wasn't funny 50 years ago, it's not funny now. Okay, let's talk to this what? The thing is, though, like they said, oh yeah, let's let's just make an industry out of getting all the salt out of the salt tree and selling it. It doesn't belong to them to negotiate. <laughs> what manner of mischief brings you youngins to an old what this time, eh? They want to rebuild the salt tree, Grandad. Mifri, tell him about the deal. Well, bugger me, we never had the coin to hands to put, sorry, to put the place back to how it was. But it sounds like that's about to change. There's just one small wrinkle in your plan. It doesn't account for all of the nasties queuing up to eat anyone who goes near the shore. The king used to send soldiers to cull the buggers, but the Imperials weren't about to help the likes of us. Don't worry, Grandad, we'll take care of that. Commander Hex has been talking about starting up regular patrols, and I'm sure she'd assign me to the lock if asked. I'd appreciate that, Whiskarf, my lad, truly I would. So does that mean you've gotten better with that blade of yours? I've been training I, but mostly to kill Imperials. You've some experience hunting monsters, don't you, Mifri? Think you can... So he could cast an eye over a few of the local beasties and teach me how to deal with them? Okay. Let's not waste any time then. I'll see you by the lock. The lock. <laughs> Once you are busy attaining to the local fauna, I shall have Master Watt explain to me exactly what is required to restore the soul tree to its former glory. Good hunting. Okay. So let me summon La Chocobo. Just to assist us. Thankfully my Chocobo is max rank, rank 20. Only took about 4 billion years, but we got there in the end. Oh, there we go. There we go. So, right then, Mifri, I've got a spyglass here you can use to take a closer look at these pests. Once you've got their measure, you can tell me what to do, and we'll see how well I get on. Search your surroundings for yabbies. You may move the camera as well as zoom in and out. Target a yabby and inspect it with left click. Okay. Discover the weak point. Is it the gob? So the Abbey's entire body is protected by a hard carapace, but the undersides of the head look soft and vulnerable. Uh, looks like you found a Yabby. They s say hitting their shells is like smacking a rock. Any suggestions? Just hit as hard as you can. Aim for the soft underside of its head. Vulnerable under the head they are. Right then. Wish me luck. Fair enough. Oh, 
Well, that was easy. So, thanks, my free. I did just as you told me, and the wavekin went down like a sack of potatoes. Let's find something else. So, are we gonna just kill all the local wildlife? There's yabbies everywhere. There we go. I think I can handle yabbies now. So we should try something different. What else is out there? Search your surroundings for Phobads. Okay. Oh, the eye. So the Phobat's hands are large and powerful, but destroying its crystallized core should render the soul golem inanimate. You sense power pulsating from behind its brow. So a Phobat, how do I defeat one of those? Destroy the core within its brow, just hit it really, really, really hard. Inside its head, it is. I'll try to stab it right between the eyes then. So is this like a test of are you actually reading? Well that was easy. next. So, it's not easy fighting with the Liberator Valamigo watching your every move, but I got the job done. Thanks for the advice, Mifri. I feel a lot better prepared for my patrols now. Any road, we should head back to the Soul Tree before Grandad starts to worry. I I've been snipped into pieces and fed to a Yabby's hatchlings. Okie dokie. So let's go back to what? <laughs> jumpy jumpy. Not too far away. So I wonder how many quests are left. <clears throat> so I see you've returned in one piece. Dealt with those beasties then, did you? I fought them myself after a bit of instruction from Mifri here, like... Once I've shared what I've learned with the others, we should have no trouble keeping the shoreline clear. Good lad, a fine young man you've become, Whiskar. A fine young man indeed. Too often of late, I hear tales of folk over the, in the city. Drunk of victory and hungry for revenge. Their heads struck firmly in the past. But we need to set our sights on the future on things which will improve our lot. Things like getting the salt tree ready to welcome our long lost countrymen. That's complete. Next. So the next quest is called A Blissful Arrival. Alphanod seems satisfied that he and Wa are of one mind. So, it seems Whiskar has the sultry security well in hand. I, meanwhile, have discussed the next steps with Master Watt and completed my inspection of the site. With a little work, the vacant buildings here could be made into a very, sorry, very presentable dwellings. Message from General Aldin, sorry. Apologies for the interruption, miss, but the General would speak with you at your earliest convenience. Do not feel obliged to wait around on my account. I will remain here to hammer out the finer details with Wa and act as an intermediary with our business partners and Aldar. You should go. General Aldens asks you wait for him by the main gate in the Alamegan Quarter. My apologies again, miss. Fare you well. Bye. OK. 
Okay, let's go. So where do we go? I could just teleport to be honest. Let's do that. I need to remember Alamigo and Quarter means I can teleport there. Okay, let's go. In the right place. Ah, yeah. Waiting. 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 Is it always night time in this flipping game? They're living in winter as well. It's like, it's just dark. It feels like 24 hours a day at the moment. No sooner have we broken up one mob than another forms. Thankfully, all have been amenable to reason thus far. But it is no concern of yours. We must speak of the men Arenvald and his comrades apprehended in the peaks. By their uniforms, the captives were first judged to be Imperial troops. But after further investigation, their true identities came to light. I dare say you remember Yu Yuhasi and Laurentius, the fugitives who conspired with Captain Ilbert in the Crystal Braves' betrayal. Aye, well, it would seem they followed him all the way to the Wall. It was they who orchestrated the slaughter of the resistance fighters prior to the Griffin's infernal ritual. Were it in your hands, how would you punish these men? The lies would be forfeit. Execution is not the answer. Wait, we're not God. Who are we to judge? You would spare these animals. Yours is a more merciful brand of justice than mine. In any event, I thank you for your honesty. When the time comes for the Alliance to pass judgment, I'll see that your opinion is heard. Well, that concludes our business here. But there is more I would say. Walk with me. I bear a share of the blame for Ilbert's atrocities. Had I openly supported the cause of Alamegan liberation, he might not have felt driven to do what he did. Things could have been different, and I'm sorry they aren't. But even after all that has happened, my homeland is free. With the Scions and the Alliance at their side, my countrymen have reclaimed what many thought lost forever. Under her new leadership, I have every confidence that Alamigo will emerge from the shadow of the Empire and rise once more to greatness. Which means my work here is done. Soon I will return to Uldar and take my place at the Sultana's side. Father. I'll not deny there's a part of me that wants to stay. The same part that contemplated renouncing my rank and joining you as a wandering cell sword. But I pledged my blade to Nanamo, and I will not betray that oath. Is this truly what you want, Father? It is. Ever has my sword been hers to command, and ever shall it remain. Thank you for lending an ear. When all the rest are clamoring for me to stay, I trust you'll send me on my way.
Cool. Let's talk to Roban again. So, that took longer than I intended, but at least you know where I stand. Now that's settled, Ardenvold, what news? Ardenvold, sorry. We may have a problem, sir. A group of Anatta has arrived at the main gates, and I do not mean the Vera. These are Kelyana, the ones that summoned the Primal. They're insisting that they're allowed to attend the council. Lisa's trying to reason with them, but she may need your help. Hmm. An invitation extended to all of the native beast tribes, but we assumed the Kelyana would refuse it out of out of hand. We had best go and see for ourselves. Pippin, take command of our forces and be ready for battle. Mifri, you've dealt with these Kalyana before. I'd have you at my side. Okie dokie. Alrighty ho. Let's go. So where is Elise? Over there. There she is. Splat. So, Mifri Roban, gods, it's good to see you. Ah, the Slayer has come. We have not forgotten how you sinned against the Lady of Bliss, but we did not come here to shed blood. You claim to seek harmony with all who call Girabania home. If this is true, sorry, truly your wish, you will welcome us as envoys of the, um, whatever. It is our wish... And you are welcome, but we cannot condone the summoning of primals. If you want to enter under any crystal jewelry, you may have my word that it will all be returned to you when the meeting is over. Uh, we will do as you ask, but you will not have our weapons. We are not so foolish as to place ourselves entirely at the mercy of our tormentors. I reckon that's the closest we're going to get to a compromise, and we will have people standing guard. Aye, let's uh, let them keep their swords. Then we have an agreement. Lead the way to your meeting chamber. You. Why do I have the feeling we've welcomed the Viper into our miss? So we got another orchestral roll, the measure of his reach. Okay, next. Let's see. Dress up Roban toy, a re return of the bull. Roban seems unconvinced by the Kalyana's sincerity. This Kalyana elder's intention seems at odds with all we know of her tribe. What do you think, Mifri? The enthralled cannot be trusted. Maybe even enthralled can learn to compromise? You believe an understanding can be reached? Tis not entirely unheard of, I suppose. Those who followed Saint Shiva eventually sought reconciliation with Ishgard. Whatever the truth, I would take no chances. The guard must be strengthened, ideally with people who know a thing or two about primals. Can we rely on the Scions? I'll go round up our comrades and send them to the Alamegan Quarter. You can go on ahead if you like, Mifri. My thanks. Um, I will see you in the palace. Okay. So let's teleport back. Q. 
Cool. Oh, you stole that. I haven't seen that in a while. Mifri, I've brought reinforcements. Aronvold told me of the arrival of unexpected guests, and I agreed that it would be prudent to call upon Yishtola and Fancred as well. One can never be too careful when dealing with the Enthralled. I am not familiar with the Kalyana tribe myself, but Yisail's, sorry, Alise's report suggested that they shunned contact with the other races. Uh, despised it, in fact, even compared it to other... And a fan. I can't even read these words anymore. Indeed, the this apparent reversal in altitude is most curious. No one expected a response to our invitation, much less an envoy. And I imagine Lise was forced to make some rather hasty arrangements in order to accommodate them. Speaking of which, how should we deploy ourselves? If the meeting is to be held in the throne room, it would seem wise to have eyes both inside and outside the palace. Yatola and I um, can stand guard without. That leaves the three of you to keep watch over proceedings in the throne room itself. Kill. Cool. Understood. We should join General Alden inside then. Mifri, do you know of the rear entrance to the palace in the eastern edge of the city at the top of the stairs? The guard there should have been instructed to let us pass. Kill. You're with the Scions, miss. General Aldin left orders that you are to be escorted inside if you'll follow me. Cool. Interesting. Thank you all for coming. I am Lise Hext, and I speak for the Resistance. Among you are village elders, refugee leaders, envoys from the Ananta and the Kikern. You've come from every corner of Girabania to help decide the future of Alamigo. But before that, I want to ask you a question. Where is Papa Limo? First thing you noticed when you came in. For me, it was that empty throne. It has no one to sit on it now. No viceroy, no king. Would any of you like to take their place? I'll be king, please. Or should someone else sit there? Then let's sit here in a circle. As equals. And I hope, as friends. Are they gonna make like a round table? Done. Lise has removed monarchy as a choice early in the game and positioned them to consider a joint government. All things considered, I would say events have got off to a fine start. And that is Alagana's stance on the matter. 
Thank you, Ravenfred. Another vote in favor. Next, let's hear from Shanti of the Kaliana. Tell us, how do your people feel about the idea of a republic? Wish only that those who dwell within Gear Abania devote themselves to our faith. You shall all worship Sri Lakshmi! Lady of Bliss, grace us once more with your beauteous visage. Slay them all. We need to evacuate these people right now, or the Primal will make thralls of them all! It's up to us. and Arenvold to shield us. Aye, but they can't well defend your guests and attack the Primal, can they? We're stuck on the back foot. Uh, all right, I think I have an idea. Keep these people safe, General. I'll be back as soon as I can. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Upscale, whatever. Yeah, whatever she's about, she'd best make it quick. Come then. Who will be next to die on my steel? Well, there's some thumbnails for the episode for you. Go. So, how do we fight her without leaving our allies wide open? We can't stay on the back foot forever. No, damn it. If we think like that, we've already lost. I have the Warrior of Light at my side. We can do this. Is that right, Mifri? So, use the duty action Deflect to dissipate Aether Spheres Lakshmi releases during the battle. Be warned that allowing an ally to be enthralled by an Aether Sphere will result in failure. Okay. Let's do this then. I'll have to pay attention. I literally can't remember the cooldowns for Samurai.
I mean, are we supposed to attack Lakshmi or? Okay, so the Aether cannot touch a single person. Otherwise, it's instant game over. Okay. I wonder what the, if there's like a cooldown on those orbs. Do these fighters spawn forever, or will they all, like, assist in the fight with Lakshmi after I've killed them all? I know I'm a girl in game, but I, uh, I'm not all for playing with balls all day. Damn it all! It's only a matter of time before we miss one. Oh, really? How did she escape her jail? What of it? Do you want to kill this thing or not? Interesting, interesting, interesting. Interesting. So that was Lisa's idea, really? So they spread out so I can, like, stay on the boss. Interesting. So they're doing raid dynamics with me even though they're NPCs. Interesting. Nice. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, so they're all escaped, so we can concentrate on the fight. Fair enough. I wonder if, like, Orenvold and, uh, for, like, Hordolev, they'll get married or something. Plenty in common. Well. Uh, hello? What? I wonder if this is like practice for like solo dungeons or something. As long as you do your part, then the AI will do the rest sort of thing. The way they have it with Chocobo races. It could be a thing for the they're planning for the future, like just make sure that dungeon queues are never too long. They just fill the last spot with like an AI. And we see. Could be reasonable. It keep server queues down to nothing. Just not going to move this time. Okay. I guess sometimes I have to move, other times they move.
Oh crap. So I can see a four dollar is A for going down to zero, so I'm assuming if it hit actually reaches zero, then game over. It's a race against time. Break from these. We done? Yeah, that's the stuff. We What is this? I'm only going to say this once. The Ananta just summoned their primal in the throne room. My friends are fighting her, but they need help. They need someone with the echo, and by the gods, I wish I had it, but I don't. I told you before that you still had time, but things have changed. I need your answer now. You can end it like Xenos, or you can fight for Alamigo. Your choice. Fair enough. Oh, that was fun. All the jaggedy edges. I can't wait to lay up the resolution of this game. Seven hells. It's her. The butcher. <laughs> 